Haven't you heard, I'm Sakamoto is one of the funniest anime I've ever seen, with the namesake of the series being one of the best protagonists anime has to offer. It has strong themes that keep you throughout the run of the show, Sakamoto is the best and you should try to be more like Sakamoto because he is perfect. Every conflict Sakamoto is in has its catalyst found with the other person, either out of jealousy or trying to prove something. Every time Sakamoto handles it elegantly, like that time someone was bullied for money, so Sakamoto told him to get a job. Okay, maybe not the best example, but that time he was dodging a baseball bat and only got hit a few times. Huh. Maybe Sakamoto isn't an infallible demigod. Maybe he is weaker than almost everyone. Maybe he's the one on the verge of losing everything. Let's talk about Haven't You Heard I'm Sakamoto's Ending. Minor spoilers ahead. On the surface level, the character of Sakamoto seems almost untouchable, but the further you see him push, the harder he has to try. That on its own does not change the core concepts of the show or Sakamoto himself. Really, everything is going great all the way up until Blondie over here asks this. You're not really going to America, are you? Sakamoto plays it off, but then is asked, do you have any regrets? Which he replies, if I do, it's that I don't know the exact number of holes in the ceiling of the nurse's office. I didn't think much of this at first, until I found this image. I know what you're thinking. I thought the same thing. Sakamoto looks stylish even when he's shoved into a locker. But then I thought, wait, no, that's a coffin. That's when it hit me. He knew the layout of the nurse's office, like the back of his hand. The comment he made, him leaving all of a sudden, the coffin, it all insurmountably adds up to that one fact that we do not have enough conclusive evidence to prove Sakamoto was dying. Sure he knew the layout of the nurse's office, but that's an anime trope. Sure he was in a coffin, but it's the end of the series, a send-off, a funeral. Of course he leaves at the end of the series, he can't just stay in high school forever. I hear you saying it now, so if there is not enough evidence to prove Sakamoto is dying, then what did happen? That's quite simple. Sakamoto left because he was dying. But you just said there wasn't enough evidence. I'm sticking to that claim. I can't prove it. I can only use the most powerful tool at my disposal, the mind of a writer. If I was writing Sakamoto with the notion that he was dying, I would have written it in the exact same style that the series used. Really, think back to it. Every scene, every relationship, it all just fits. It feels like Sakamoto was dying because the writer had that in mind while writing it, but he still was leaving it ambiguous enough that people could draw their own conclusions. I wholeheartedly believe after dissecting every scene that stood out in memory that Sakamoto was 100% dying and he knew it. So, you say. What does that change? You say. It changes everything. I'm about to bring you down a path you won't be able to come back from. What if, before the series ever started, Sakamoto, whoever he was in the past, got the news that he was dying? After hearing the news, he could have taken it in a multitude of different ways, but they all lead to Sakamoto eventually coming to terms with his inevitable death and the fact he has such little time on this planet. He accepts the fact that he will no longer travel to Mars, that he won't be able to follow his dreams, or have an incredibly close relationship with anyone since it would only hurt hurt them more once he passes. After accepting all of this, he decides to dedicate himself to the people around him, making everyone as happy as he possibly can on his last few moments on Earth. That's why he seems so unstoppable. He's not weighed down by thoughts of the future and has accepted the past. If you want proof of this being the cause of his strength, then look no further than the teaching of Buddhism or the words of Gandhi. Even most martial arts teach the same thing. To be at peace with the world is to be at peace with one's self. Sakamoto fits that bill. By living in the present and living for the people around him, Sakamoto isn't the best because he is just the coolest. He's the best because Sakamoto has already been on his hero's journey, and has come to grips with mortality and now is acting out his precious last few moments as a hero, someone giving everything for the well-being and happiness of others. We all should be more like Sakamoto, not because he is the best, but because he has dealt with what life has given him and has walked the path of being kind to our fellow man. If everyone was like Sakamoto, even just a little, we wouldn't have to worry about bullies or midlife crisis. We would all have each other. And that would be enough. 
Hi everybody, thanks for watching this video about my takeaway of the ending of Sakamoto. If you want more videos from me, there should be some on the side right here. And of course, the best way to stay up to date with my content and everything I do is to subscribe. If you want more on Sakamoto, Digibro did a video, link in the description, to his takeaway of the themes of the series. And well, I feel like what he took away from it kind of adds to what I took away from it, and they kind of go well and go hand in hand with each other, so definitely check that out. And of course, if you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, all your jazz, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everybody!